to, to understand that I'm elect. I was talking with someone uh, today, and they touched on the great Bible doctrine, or I did, either them or me, I forget, touched on the great Bible doctrine of election uh, in the Scripture. And it, it, it's, uh, it's a study of the Scripture that's not understood by uh, a lot of people, and if you don't balance it, you know, any, any Bible doctrine must be balanced. Is it, isn't it uh, Proverbs or uh, is that Ecclesiastes? It said that a false balance is abomination. But a just weight is the Lord's delight. And you can, you can balance the Scripture. You can, you can be overbalanced. Now, you can overbalance a doctrine. You can make it apply to, to just a segment. You can make it apply to, to just a, a small portion but a good Bible student knows that you have to harmonize the Bible. You can't take an isolated scripture and prove any doctrine with it. I, I've told that to young preachers. If, if, if you're going to prove a Bible doctrine, you've got to have more than just one scripture. You've got to be able to go into the volume of the book. Jesus said, for lo, it's written in the volume of the book. I've come to do thy will, O God. So it takes a volume. And... Uh, to, to bring truth out. For instance, and I won't ask for hands. Uh, I see one back here. I'll get, I'll get your hand. But uh, for instance, <laughs> prophecy. Let's just take prophecy. This, this, this is a Bible class. You like theology? I do. If you, uh, if, if you take a scripture, and can one scripture fit more than one time? Dispensation. Can, can you quote a scripture out of the Old Testament and it fit more than just one time period? Would you be tearing the scripture up? Would you feel like you were resting the scripture out of its true meaning if you applied it to more than one time setting? Well, I say that there's a harmonization of the scripture called the duality of the scriptures and that has to be understood. And that's, that, that's an important subject. Sister Carol, you had your hand up. Um, the scripture talk, touching on what you said a minute ago the well, scripture says he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him it's easy to believe the scripture also says you believe that thou, that, thou is a, that, that there is a God thou doest well the Satan, or Satan the devils believe also and they tremble but um, that, that second part it's easy to believe that there is a God Everything else falls under the rewarder of him that diligently seek him. Absolutely. Absolutely. All of our faith, everything, everything that we do really falls into that category of expecting an expectation because we do something, we expect an outcome or, a, or God to go a certain way because we've gone a certain way. Absolutely. And that scripture you use, by the way, is uh, devils believe and tremble. That, 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 that needs work. So when you talk about belief, we're talking about levels. And Jesus certainly did not build a church on somebody with just an elementary level. Uh, he built a church out of those that got the message and caught the message. And uh, when you deal with Scripture, like I said, this, this is a study, but if I, if I say to you, do you understand the duality of the Scriptures? I don't throw that at you to make it sound witty and that's a real catchy phrase and or the roads is just being witty, but no, I there. That means that there's there's dual scriptures. Can I show you what I'm talking about? Look at Matthew two with me for a moment. Just Matthew two. Uh, just use one verse, and uh, I'll pluck it out of the Bible. I, I let me let me tell you how to do this. I want you to write down Matthew two and verse fifteen. And uh, I'm going to need some help because this is off the cuff. And I believe that uh, we'll go back into the book of uh, Deuteronomy. And uh, we'll go to the book of uh, Hosea. But I want to begin first here in Matthew uh, 2 and verse 15. This is Mary and Joseph. and They're returning. They uh, have to flee. Herod is after them and after the Christ. And the, the, the battle for Christ has uh, begun. He's been born. And, and um, the prophecies of Isaiah 53 uh, have all come true. And... Um, we have this Christ here, this, this uh, uh, man-child, his name was Jesus, that was, 
that should call his name Jesus. He'd save his people from their sin, fulfill all the scriptures that a virgin would conceive, bring forth a child, and should call his name Emmanuel. But um, in chapter 2, in verse 15, the battle begins. And uh, this uh, scripture then, let's pick it up at verse 13. And when they had departed, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise. Take this young child and his mother and flee into Egypt because of persecution. I added that. That's, I'm reading that, but I added that. I hope everybody can get that. And, uh, and be there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and the mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of uh, of the Lord by the prophet. Now there was a prophet. I, I want you to get that there was a prophecy. And the prophecy was, out of Egypt have I called my son. Now Matthew, Matthew, he, uh, uh, he took this prophecy and he applied it to Christ. See, that's Jesus. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Anybody have any problem with that? That, that scripture was applied to Christ. And he took that from Hosea 11. If you go back to Hosea now, if you'll, if, uh, you'll look at the 11th chapter of the book of uh, Hosea, you'll see, and if somebody gets that before I do, feel free to read it. But if you'll go back there, if you'll pick these scriptures up, you'll see that in the 11th chapter, he said when Israel was a child, and notice he's talking about a nation right here, and he, he's dealing with a nation. And he plucked this scripture out of Deuteronomy. I, I want to say, and I, I, I can't at this point put my fingers around that verse, but he said, when Israel was a child, he said, then I loved him. And I called, uh, I called my son out of Egypt. Now wait a minute. Matthew said it applied to Jesus. <coughs> But uh, Hosea is using it as Israel. Now, which one's right? Which, uh, which one of these writers was right? Which one of them heard from God? Hosea? You going to tell me Hosea didn't get this from the Lord? Oh, or was it Matthew? Matthew didn't get this from the Lord. No, both. Why? Because under the duality of the Scripture, they were able to take that verse and use it and harmonize it out of, uh, out, out of Egypt have I called my son. Well, Hosea was right and Matthew was right because they were able to take that one verse of Scripture and bring it from prophecy and bring it down. Another very well-known Scripture is used all the time. Brother Marlowe uses it all the time. Uh, and that's the one from Joel 2 and 28. Simon Peter <laughs> used it on the day of Pentecost. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He said it was written of the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass uh, afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men uh, will dream dreams and young men will see visions. Now, would I be doing it, would I be misusing that if I brought that scripture down to this day? Or could I, under the duality of the scripture, understand that it did apply to the day of Pentecost. Peter said it did. But would I be resting that scripture? W-R-E-S-T-I-N-G. Would I be resting that scripture out of its context by saying, uh, I, I, I firmly believe that in the last days, that once again, that there's a latter rain coming, and God is going to uh, expand knowledge, and knowledge, the Bible said, knowledge shall be increased uh, as the waters cover the earth. Well, I, I believe, how many believe there's more revelation coming than, than what's already been given? Amen. Some don't believe that, but uh, I, I certainly believe the latter rain is going to, it, it's certainly going to give us what we don't have. And i tell you this, I can tell you this, and I don't mind going down on record. I enjoy hearing Brother Marlowe teach today what God has given him today more than I did 40 years ago. 
because what I heard from him 40 years ago, I have notebooks full of it, Brother Dick. We all do. And every 